Welcome back everyone. In this video I'll show you how to perform the Wilcoxon rank sum test for independent samples. In one of our previous videos I showed you how to perform the Wilcoxon signed rank test. Now that's used whenever the samples are dependent on each other. When they're independent you can use this test. That being said, let's go ahead and read the question. Suppose we wish to compare two competing treatments for the management of adult onset diabetes. A total of eight subjects agree to participate in the investigation and are randomly assigned to one of the competing treatments. After following the prescribed treatment regimen for six weeks, we assess the patient's self-reported health status. Patients are asked to rank their current health on an ordinal scale from 0 to 20 with higher scores reflecting better health. Are self-reported health status scores different between treatments? Take a look at the data. We have in this column the status for those that were in treatment 1 and in this column the status of those that were in treatment 2. The groups are independent, the sample is small, and it is not stated to be normally distributed. This is why we use a non-parametric test such as this one. And as with other non-parametric tests, the hypothesis is based on the equality of the medians. So we'll start by writing out the null hypothesis and that is that the median of group 1 is equal to that of group 2. The alternative is the opposite of this, that the treatment actually worked and they are different. The way it works is you first pool together all of these numbers and rank them from highest to lowest. So if we group together all these numbers, you'll notice that zero is the smallest number out of all of them, so that ranks one. The second largest is seven, so that's two. We have three here, four, five, six. Seventh place is 15, and in last place is 16. At this point, we will sum up both columns. So we'll sum up these numbers, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 5 is 8, plus 8 is 16. And the sum of these four numbers is 20. The smaller of the sums of the ranks in these groups will be used to calculate our test statistic S. And the formula for that is shown here. Notice that we have this S value. We will be writing 16 into that to calculate our Z score. Now before I continue, if we had two ranks that were equal, we would do the same thing as we did with the Wilcoxon signed rank test and we would split the rank. In other words, if this number were 7 hypothetically and we would have two low values of 7, we can't say that this is 1 and that's 2 and vice versa. Instead we would write down a rank of 1.5 here and a rank of 1.5 and then you would proceed on to the third rank. Now we don't have that situation here so you don't have to worry about it but in case you do now you know how to approach it. Substituting 16 into s and n sub 1 is equal to 4 and n sub 2 is equal to 4 where these represent the number of observations in each group you should end up with a z value of negative 0.58. We need this value so that we can make our decision whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis. And what we do next is we find out the probability that z is less than negative 0.58. Don't forget to multiply this value by 2 because of the hypothesis the way it was written. It was written based on equals or not equals to. That's a two-tailed test. You multiply your p-value by 2. This will be found in a table and here's what the table should look like. We have negative 0.5 that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's a value of 0 0.281. 0 0.281 times 2, using our calculator, you get 0 0.562. Before we continue, this would look like the following on a Z score chart, where negative 0 0.58 would be somewhere here. And this value is what we compare to with the 0 0.05 significance. 0 0.562 is much bigger than 0 
Because of this, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Do not reject. If you recall, the null hypothesis was that they are equal, and this means that the treatments weren't any different, technically speaking. We do not reject the following. Now, to conclude in a formal way, we say that based on the Wilcoxon ranked sum test, we have insufficient evidence at 0.05 significance level to say a significant difference between the two treatments existed. And so there you have it. That is how to perform the Wilcoxon rank sum test for independent sample.